Shalom, everyone, and welcome. We welcome those of you here at Temple Shalom and those who have joined us on YouTube Live. On behalf of all of us, we are excited to share this special Shabbat with you. For those who do not know, my name is Rabbi Lawrence Mallinger. I had the privilege of sharing the Bima with my son, our song leader, David Mallinger, and we're excited to celebrate this special Shabbat. This Shabbat has a special name. It's Shabbat Zakor, or the Sabbath of Remembrance. The special name given to the last Shabbat before the festival of Harim, which will begin tomorrow night as the sun sets. It is a Shabbat because we're supposed to remember of all of the dangers and the challenges of our people's history. But at the same time, we celebrate the Sabbath, the potential for all the blessings and the goodness we can have. And the fact that we're still commanded in this month of Adar to find humor and laughter and joy in everything that we do. We begin our service with the blessing of the Sabbath lights on pages two and three. I invite you to rise either in body and or spirit as we join together in the blessings. Again, pages two and three in your prayer book. Please be seated. We continue on page six. Tonight we've entered this sanctuary to welcome Shabbat. Within these walls, we sit surrounded by numberless generations. Our ancestors built the synagogue as a visible sign of God's presence in their midst. Throughout our long history and our endless wanderings, it has endured a beacon of truth, love, and justice for all humanity. Its presence guided our ancestors to lives of righteousness, holding up to them a vision of their truest selves. Please join with me. Now we, in our turn, come into this sanctuary to affirm the sacredness of our lives. May we enter this place in peace. May holiness wrap around us as we cross its threshold. 
weariness, doubt, the flaws within our human hearts, the harshness of the weak. Let these drop away at the door. In the brightness of Shabbat, let peace settle upon us as we lift our hearts in prayer. We continue on page 24. Part of the Shabbat belief system, if you will, is that special angels or messengers of God are with us on this sacred moment. The idea to bless us with peace and hope. Shalom Aleichem. Shalom Aleichem. During the 1990s, there was an evangelical group that was trying to have an ad campaign to bring God into our lives. They paid millions of dollars for road signs on the side of the highway or major cities. My favorite ones were, what part of thou shall not do you not understand? Please listen to God. If you think rush hour is bad, wait what happens if you don't follow the commandments, God. God wants you to know that God loves you. Let me know that you can see me every week. It was an ad campaign to help you reconnect. Well, since October 7th and the horrific events of Israel with the atrocities committed against men, women, and children, there's been an ad campaign to basically instill a positive image of Jewish life and to fight against anti-Semitism. Jews are like coffee, hot and strong. My personal favorite. <laughs> what part of anti-Semitism do you not understand? It's not cool. Or smile. A Jewish person probably invented the medicine that's saving your life. The point is, is that we're in a season where we're living our lives and miss great challenges. Is it okay to laugh? Which, by the way, is the topic of my remarks later this evening. The answer is it is okay. Because when we laugh, we're able to step back, perhaps see the absurdity, and take a moment to enjoy the blessing of life rather than dwelling on what not going well. We continue with Chati Kaddish on page 26. We continue with page 28. Once again, I invite you to rise, either in body and or spirit. Oh, 
31. This is an hour of change. Within it we stand uncertain on the border of light. Shall we draw back or cross over? Where shall our hearts turn? Shall we draw back, my brother, my sister, or cross over? This is the hour of change, and within it we stand quietly on the border of light. What lies before us? Shall we draw back, my brother, my sister, or cross over? Baruch Atadonai, Amari, Aravin. Thank you. 
אשר אנוכי מצווך היום על לבביך ושינתם לבניך ודיברת בעם ושיתך בביתך ובלכתך בדרך ושוכבך וחומך ושרתם להיות על ידיך והיו לתתפוך בין עיניך ותבטם על מזוזות ביתך ובהישריך למען תזכרו ועשיתם מכל מצוותי והייתם קדושים לאלוהיכם אני אדוני אלוהיכם אשר הוצאתי לכם מארץ מצרים להיות לכם לאלוהים אני Standing on the parted shores of history, we still believe what we were taught before we ever stood at Sinai's foot, that wherever we go, it is eternally Egypt, that there is a better place, a promised land, that the winding way to that promise passes through the wilderness, that there's no way to get from here to there, except by joining hands, marching together, Micha Mocha, page four. my pick Page 43, please join with me in the middle of the page. Give us a place to rest, Adonai, our God. Bring us into shelter in the song, long, soft, long evening shadows of your truth. For with you are true protection and safety, and in your presence are acceptance and gentle love. Watch over us as we go forth. Prepare for us as we return. Spread over us your shelter of peace over all we love, over our Jerusalem and yours. Baruch atah Adonai, ha-poreh sukhat shalom aleinu, v'yakol amo Yisrael al Yerushalayim. As we turn the page in our song of joy, Vishamru. Vishamru. Oh, <laughs> 
Asadonai, Asadonai, it has a mind on page 46. Once again, I invite you to rise either in body and or spirit. Adonai sevatai tita ufiya yitai latepa Adonai open up our lips that our mouths may declare your praise Baruch atah Adonai Please join with me at the top of the page. May these hours of rest and renewal open our hearts to joy and our minds to truth. May all who struggle find rest on this day. May all who suffer find solace. May all who hurt find healing on this day. May all who despair find purpose. May all who hunger find fulfillment on this day. And may this day fulfill its promise. Baruch atah Adonai mekadesh ha-Shabbat. As we do each and every Shabbat, we take a moment to pause and share words of gratitude with one another. If you're on YouTube, go ahead and type in the chat if there's something that you are grateful for so I can share with the greater community. But too often in our lives, we dwell on what's not going well that we forget that there are many blessings very much right in front of us. So if there is something that you are truly grateful for, we invite you to raise your hand and share with us so we can share our words of gratitude together. Bobby. Yes, the three musketeers are here. The three musketeers are here. I love it. I love it. And I'm very grateful for my friends who are always there for me. 
Well, thank you, Bobby. That's very sweet. And I'm glad we could have uh, the three. Actually, I'm going to say the five musketeers tonight, okay? <laughs> I'm going to say the five musketeers tonight, okay? okay? <laughs> yeah, David. Oh. Um, so last week, I was uh, doing this with you, um, mm-hmm. and I was able to avail my brand new Misha Barach, um, that is written after uh, my late uncle, and I'm happy to play it again tonight for you all. You and um, thank you, Robin. Please. Um, Mara and I attended a Zoom dating yesterday. We're going to be great aunt and uncle for the third time. Wow. Um, my niece is having a boy who is due, I think, the beginning of October. Well, I, I wish her uh, a Naasa Tova, a healthy and, and pleasant journey. And we look forward to hearing the wonderful news when the event comes. So that's wonderful. Yes, please, Sherry. Wow. Nice. Uh, by the way, I'm just assuming we're talking about Gavin. Yeah. Okay, okay. Thank you. <laughs> I just want to clarify. I just want to clarify. And, uh, you know, usually, you know, his father's not around, or his one friend who also plays the game by himself, and now he has a whole bunch of friends. Oh, that's wonderful. Well, I wish him a great season. And many have a lot of fun with it. Maybe go off to college with it. You know, you never know. You never know. Uh, Kara uh, Harwich is thrilled to have all of her children and grandchildren with her this weekend. So, Kara, have a wonderful time with your family and may create many wonderful blessings. Okay. So that's why we do this, to remind ourselves that we often have many blessings in our lives and much to be grateful for. So please turn to page 59 and let us join together now in our prayer of gratitude. God of goodness, we give thanks for the gift of life, wonder beyond words, for the awareness of soul, our light within, for the world around us so filled with beauty, for the riches of the earth which day by day sustains us. For all these and more, we offer thanks. Baruch Atzad and I, Hatol Shimka Uka Nae Lachodot. As we turn the page, our prayer of peace.
As it is our custom, we now offer a special prayer for the state of Israel and the people. Rock of Israel, Redeemer of Israel, compassionate one, let your mercy overflow, for our pain is immense. Eternal God, give strength to your people, strengthen our souls. Comforter, comfort us from heaven. Comfort the state of Israel, comfort all the bereaved families among the mourners of Zion and Jerusalem. Please, God, help us, for we need your help to free the captives, to release them all. Give strength to their families. Give them the power to persevere. Healer of the brokenhearted, binder of wounds, may your compassion be filled to strengthen and heal our people. Send a whole healing from heaven, a healing of the soul, a healing of the body. You, O oh God, who give people understanding, provide wisdom to the leaders of the state of Israel. Give them a wise and prudent heart to protect your people Israel. Shield of Abraham, helper of Sarah, shield and help all who protect our land. Protect those who serve the state of Israel, whether in combat or in other roles, whether by air, land, or sea. And may you, O oh God, spread over Israel your sukkah of peace. May you bring peace to the land and everlasting joy to its inhabitants. As together we say, Amen. As it is our custom now, in a moment, we'll help each have the opportunity to offer our own prayers within. But first, we pause as a family to offer prayers of peace, comfort, and healing. Peace from the Hebrew word shalom, from the root shalem, to make whole. May we, in essence, have a sense of wholeness as we deal with the brokenness of our lives. Comfort, may we each have a moment of respite from the challenges we face each and every day. And, of course, healing. Healing of the body, healing of the spirit, and healing of the soul. If you are joining us on YouTube Live, we invite you to type in the names of your friends and loved ones or yourselves if you wish for offer a blessing. We will call upon the members here in just a moment. In our congregational family, we continue to offer our prayers for Yonatan Yitzchak Deborah, Barbara Spector Uninus, Diane Safran, Margie Abelson, Pinkas Mendel Ben Rut, Perla Chaya Batina Bracha, Yaakov Baruch Ben Rachoranya, Chaya Rachel Batbashafegel, Steve Altman, Sheila Phillips, Baruch Ben Miriam, Phil Rubin, Harold Bat Zima Gittel, Avi Barajel, Sue Wolin, Fredo Basha Batliba, Stu Caplo, Marvin Schwartz, Alan Roth, Douglas Calvin, Danielle Lunin, Sarah Lunin, Paul Robinson, Beatrice Anredondo, Evelyn Semmel, Jordan Ross, Jennifer Whiteson, Roy Hiller, Marilyn Belmont, Natalie Einstein, Jamie Turnbell, Rich Levy. At this time, I invite anyone in the congregation that wish to offer a blessing for someone to please raise your hand. I will call upon you. In our faith group, we also offer a prayer for Rita Queen and for those we name silently in our hearts. We continue to offer our prayers on behalf of the men and women of the U.S. Armed Forces and the Israeli Defense Forces who are still in harm's way and for their families who await their safe return. We offer our prayers for citizens both here and throughout the world, dealing with the challenge of natural and man-made disasters, the ongoing war between Israel and Hamas, the war between Russia and Ukraine, the terrorist bombing in Moscow this afternoon, of course, the challenges of weather and climate change that we all experience each and every day. It's our prayer and hope that someday we will wake into a world filled with peace and hope. The Misha Rare this evening, as already indicated, written by David, 
and inside your order of service on the inside page. In a moment, I will open the ark. The idea is that we have the Torah scrolls that give us the lessons of the past, guide us for the present, and inspire us for the future. It is a personal choice. If you rather remain seated or standing, please do that which is most comfortable to you. Please be seated. I invite you back to your prayer book to pages 62 and 63 for words of reflection or your own words from within. We now continue silently. Thank 
There's a classic story of four women who got together to play mahjong one afternoon. And the first woman says, <sighs> the second woman goes, the third woman goes, oh. and the fourth one says, ladies, I thought we decided we weren't going to talk about our children. <laughs> The fact that we can attempt to laugh in tumultuous times is one of the badges of honor of the Jewish people. That no matter what is going on in our lives, we find some humor. I am convinced that God has a great sense of humor. God created humanity. That's a perfect example right there. The fact that we can laugh at ourselves, and as I will comment in a few moments, we can laugh with God. On September 29th, 2001, 18 days after the horrific events of 9-11, then the sane version, New York Mater Rudolph Giuliani opened up the new season of NBC's Saturday Night Live by delivering the opening monologue, sending a serious message to America that it is okay to laugh. With police commissioner then Bernard Carrick and fire commissioner Tom Van Essen at his side, a somber Giuliani began his monologue by saying that since the attack on the World Trade Center, many people have called New York City a city of heroes. Well, these are the heroes, the mayor said, pointing to the firefighters and police officers and members of the Port Authority who were standing right behind him on stage, who were cheered and applauded by the audience. As he stated on September 11th, more lives were lost than on any other single day in American history, more than Pearl Harbor and more than D-Day. The men, women, and children who were inside the World Trade Center came from across the country and from 80 different nations. They were living their lives and pursuing their dreams, and they too are remembered as heroes. He continued, our hearts are broken, but they are beating, and they are beating stronger than ever before. New Yorkers are unified, we will not yield to terrorism. We will not let our decisions be made out of fear. We choose to live our lives in freedom. When he was concluded, Paul Simon came on and sang The Boxer, and then show's executive producer, Lauren Michaels, asked the mayor, can we be funny? And Giuliana retorted, why start now? In that moment, they gave the familiar cry, live from New York, it's Saturday night. I've been asking myself this question as we've been dealing with the horrific challenges and tragedies since the horrible day of October 7th in Israel and the ongoing war against Hamas. Tomorrow night, we will celebrate Purim, and the question is asked, is it okay to laugh now? Amid the hassles and miseries of life, we rarely laugh immediately our pain and aggravation don't allow for it. But then time passes. We gain some distance from the events. And that distance gives us the perspective to view them in a far broader context. What were once moments of pure aggravation or pain become small pieces of the vast and rich tapestry of life. During the horrific days of the second uprising in the Intifada, a very popular cartoon that was in Israel every night from 10 to 10, 15, called Ahmed Fesalim. It was an Arabic cartoon, but it really wasn't Arabic. It was Hebrew, English, Yiddish, French, and bastardization of swear words in English. 
And it was about two terrorist children in the West Bank who aspired to follow their followers' step to be a terrorist, but they were having too much fun watching Friends and playing video games. And the point was, it was absolutely ridiculous. But it gave people an outlet to laugh at the absurdity and the impossibility of such a situation. No one laughs about the Holocaust while it's happening. And I don't really know that many appropriate Holocaust jokes because most of them tend to be on the anti-Semitic side. But what I can tell you is people can laugh at the follies of individuals and what they did or did not do during the, those dark days between 1933 and 1945. Or people laugh after the fact of the pogroms of Eastern Europe or during the reign of the Tsar or communist Russia or, and you can go right down the list. If you think about the comedic genius of Mel Brooks and how he laughs at various things in Jewish life, the absurdity of springtime for Hitler in the producers, or the fact that he's playing a Native American chief in the wilderness in the movie Frisco Kid, and he says the inappropriate word about the Native American, and he says, and people says that his skin is darker than this skin, we can laugh because of the absurdity of it at that moment. But what about when things seem really dark and really tough? If we take the broader view, the big pains sometimes become smaller. And once they shrink, it's safe to laugh at them. We don't necessarily laugh at our loved ones when they die, but the memories that come flooding into our minds about the wonderful moments and the wonderful stories. At my father's unveiling, I shared a story that I remember and one of the funniest moments in my life. My father, my two brothers and I were watching Blazing Saddles. And at the scene when they're sitting around the campfire, eating their beans, he knows the story. Very much so. And passing the gas. At that moment, my youngest brother let one rip like there was no one tomorrow. <laughs> and my father fell to the floor with tears in his eyes with a belly laugh. And my sister-in-law said, how can you laugh at this moment? I said, because that's what I'm choosing to remember. I don't want to remember his demise during chemotherapy. I don't want to remember the challenges in life. I want to remember the moments of laughter. I want to remember the moments of celebration. Is it okay to laugh? Absolutely. Miserable experiences turn funny in memory all the time. We could not find our car after the concert. It was midnight before the parking lot cleared enough for us to find it. Why couldn't you find it? Because I kept, forgot I could push on the key to have my lights flicker at me. Or it was I drank an entire liter of soda and then I got stuck in a five-hour traffic jam. We can laugh about it after the fact. At the moment, no. When I had COVID last year, I was so feverish at one moment and hallucinating. And you should have heard the things that I said. In all these situations and countless others, laughter becomes possible only when the pain is long gone. Perhaps Mark Twain said it best. Humor, he remarked, is tragedy plus time. Tomorrow night, with us here at seven o'clock, Jews around the world will remember a time of peril and fear. And in response, we will laugh. We will laugh at each other as we attempt to sing. We will laugh at the various costumes that we'll be wearing. And I hope you will come in costume. We did have a, pre uh, a preview this evening with the cab driver and our miss. Jews will celebrate and retell the story and the events in the book of Esther. We will tell the story of the beauty queen the queen herself, Vashti, who was ostracized, will tell the story of the idiot king, Ahasuerus, and the bravery of Mordecai and Esther. We'll tell about the evilness of Haman or Haman, and we will 
do our best to blot out his name. And we will sing and we will dance. And of course, we'll do what Jews always do in any holiday. They annoyed us. We beat them up. Let's eat. We'll have hamantash and thanks to the women of Temple Shalom. We'll have them as far as our own egg tomorrow night. Not tonight, tomorrow night. And again, we encourage you to bring your own libation because this is actually a mitzvah commandment to imbibe. So you cannot tell the difference between the blessing of Mordecai and the cursing of Haman. There is an asterisk. A, you need to be a legal age. And B, you cannot imbibe to the point that causes you harm. If you're driving home, please do not over imbibe. Some will say this is our Jewish version of Mardi Gras. Mardi Gras, in English, Fat Tuesday, the last revelry, if you will, before the sacred season of Lent, which will come to a culmination next weekend with the observance of Mardi Thursday, Good Friday, and Easter Sunday. In essence, this is our last event, because after Purim, it will be exactly four weeks from Monday night, where we will celebrate and welcome the festival of Passover, our season of renewal and a sense of rebirth and freedom for all. Laughter, you see, is more than just a release from painful memories. It's triumph. Life's difficulty and pain try to crush our spirits. And often, at least for a time, they succeed. But time can give us the strength to put that pain in its place and laughed it almost into oblivion. Humor is indeed tragedy plus time. And laughing, as we Jews will remember during our forum celebrations, is one of the great strengths of the human spirits. According to our tradition, humor is deep. The Zohar, the Kabbalistic or mystical writings, refers to King David himself as the, quote, King Jester as he knows how to free the king from the gravity necessary to ruling, as he was serving King Saul. Humor engenders an ability to counter life from within the heavy constraints of the gravity of the human condition and the gravity of religious life. The rabbis and our ancestors asked the question, was there an author to this great work we call the Torah? Was that person struggling with the stuff of life as they were writing it? Was this work born from a real encounter with life or just with philosophy? We'll never know. And unfortunately, there are people who think that laughter in religious life erodes the fear that keeps faith alive. But for many, myself included, laughter is a vital part of religious life. Think about the laughter that goes on when a baby is born and your mother tells you you were eating solid food three weeks after you were born. You know that's not true. Or when you have a child's bris or brit la, and everyone has the wonderful jokes about the different types of moils, which is the last thing a mother who just gave birth really wants to hear. Or the laughter we have when a child begins their religious education and they say, we're gonna follow tradition I'm going to drop you off to religious school. I will have nothing to do with it. You do it on your own. And some parents even slow the car down before they put the child out. Or the tradition of a bar by mitzvah when a young man stands on the bima or a young woman and says, today I'm a man or a woman. And we all know our boys are about this tall and all of our girls are this tall at their b'nai mitzvah because the age of puberty is not exactly the same. And it goes on and on and on. We're going to have Passover Seder in a month after the meal. In the classic Haggadah, it says, let us say grace. And so what's the answer? Grace. We have those ridiculous events and stories in our tradition. I found this one last piece. A Russian Jew, the singer Regina Spector. So she was born in the early 80s commented in a song about the ironic challenge of laughter in religious life. It is easier to find God funny when one is in control. God can be funny, she sings, at a cocktail party, when listening to a God-themed joke, or when presented like a genie who does magic like Houdini, or grants wishes like Jiminy Cricket or Santa Claus. But when the act of living grows more complicated, 
more vulnerable, that laughter rings hollow. No one laughs at God in the hospital. No one laughs at God in a war. No one's laughing at God when we're starving or freezing or so very poor. No one laughs at God when the doctor called after some routine test. No one's laughing at God. When it's gotten real late and their kids not back from the party just yet, but as their song winds down, Spectre softly sings, no one's laughing at God, no one's laughing at God, no one's laughing at God. We are all laughing with God. We are laughing with God. There are dangers inherent to comedy, possibilities for the cynical edge that laughter sometimes has to creep into one's life. Can we laugh at God? We might answer, we can laugh with God. We can laugh with hope, with faith, and with perspective. While hope and history might, may not yet rhyme, and while we not have yet history sense a perspective into the travails of our current movement, we can laugh at the shining absurdities that so often make our life worth living. But tomorrow night, come and laugh with God and each other. Shabbat Shalom. We now return to our prayer book to page 282 in the middle of the page for our prayer of adoration, the Elenu. Once again, I invite you to rise in body and or spirit. When those who once brought wholeness to our life have gone, and naught but memory can fill the emptiness their passing leaves behind. But memory can tell us only what we were in company with those we loved. It cannot help us find what each of us alone must now become. Yet no one is really alone. Those who live no more echo still within our thoughts and words. And what they did is part of what we have become. We do best homage to our dead when we live our lives more fully, even in the shadow of our loss. For each of our lives is worth the life of the whole world, and each one is the breath of the ultimate one. In affirming the one, we affirm the worth of each one, whose life, now ended, brought us closer to the source of life. In his unity, no one is alone, and every life finds purpose. The Mourner's Cottage we found on page 294. We now think of our loved ones whom death has recently taken from us. As we continue to observe the period of Shloshin, the 30 days, we lovingly remember Elaine Levine, mother of Lauren, mother of Jeffrey and Aretha, grandmother of Hannah, Maggie, and Theodore. We remember Martin Shapiro, brother of Ron and Lainey Shapiro. We remember our loved ones. We honor each and every Shabbat until we observe their first yard site. Mildred Sternberg, Rita Miller, Alan Fagan,
Gordon Levine, Jill Garrett, Stanley Rosenberg, Rita Gordonson, Jay Teitelbaum, Rita Carroll, Martin Tannenbaum, Gail Weiner, Debbie Sager, Douglas Hugh McCauley Sr., Louise Lauder, Regina Preter, Harvey Weiner, Margot Langett, Marvin Fink, Susan Kaplan, Leon Tchaikovsky, Paul Finkel, Sidney Feldman, Philip Goldstein, Linda Cannon. And now on this Shabbat, we lovingly remember our loved ones whose yard sites we observe. We remember Jonas Bellavin, Bess Bernstein, Barbara Bolnick, Leonard Broder, Edith Cannon, Hannah F. Cohen, Elizabeth Enfield, Benjamin Friedman, Joseph Goldstein, Marvin Gottlieb, Ralph Julius, Samuel Kerner, Dorothy M. Lee, Leonard L. Levy, Rose Ritterstein Lieberman, Charles Lyon, Paul Orens, Benjamin Resnick, Marilyn Rubin, Laurel Scheiman, Libus Silk, Muriel Simon, Rose Smuckler, Donna Tannenbaum, Isaac Winston, and those whom we name silently in our hearts. Zikranam lefracha. May each of their memories continue to be for a blessing. And may we honor the memories of all of our loved ones by making our lives a blessing. For when we do so, we will always honor their good names. Mourner's Cottage, page 294. Please join with me as we rise as one family to praise God and pray for the coming of our sovereignty. Yit kadal v'yit kadash shimei v'naba v'yomad v'yorach v'yotei v'yomich machutei v'chayechon v'yomechon v'chayet v'chol b'yit Yisrael v'agalach v'yizman kari v'yiru amen Yehe shimei raba m'varach alam l'amei amaya yit v'arach v'yit shabach v'yit v'ar v'yit namam v'yit nasei Amen. <laughs> May the source of peace and peace to all who mourn and comfort to all who are bereaved. And together we say, Amen. Amen. We now join together in singing with one voice the word of our faith of hope and peace for all of us. O oh, say shalom. O oh, say shalom, Bimroma. O ya say shalom, Aleinu. Me'ako Yisrael. Me'ibru. Please be seated. My privilege to call upon the chair of our worship committee, Andrew Goldner, to please come forward. Shabbat Shalom and happy Purim. Shabbat Shalom, how's it going? Thank you, Rabbi Ballinger. Thank you, David Ballinger, for a wonderful Friday night service. I'm just going to read from the order of service, and then I'm going to read from the highlights. <laughs> Starting with the order of service, religious school, Sunday at 9, 9.30. Torah Tots, Sunday, 9.30. Hebrew Enhancement, Tuesday and Wednesdays at 4 o'clock. Moving on to the highlights that were emailed out on Monday. Just going to go through them, starting with uh, tomorrow night. Shake your groove at Club Shushan. Karaoke Purim Megillah reading. This Saturday, tomorrow night, March 23rd at 7 o'clock here in the synagogue. All ages are welcome. Everyone is encouraged to participate. There will be prizes for best costumes. I have mine ready. Please come dressed up. BYOB 
bring your own quorum libation. Temple Shalom will provide refreshments and dessert, and tomorrow night's event is in person only. Sunday, our Purim Carnival, our Purim Palooza. This Sunday, it's March 24th, 10.30 to 12, free and open to the community. There will be carnival games, arts and crafts. Come in costume and join for a short Megillah reading. There will be hot dogs, knishes, and humitashin for sale. And it's sponsored by Toasty, WTS, and Brotherhood. Uh, moving on, the uh, Spring Sedaka is for undies for everyone. Uh, again, details in the highlights. What else do we have? Uh, WTS is, uh, no, there is, excuse me, a book club meeting April 1st at 7 o'clock at the Temple. Um, that might have gotten just changed. I don't know. Okay. I just look at the highlights on Monday. Okay, thank you. Yeah. I'm just, again, reading from the yeah. highlights from uh -huh. Monday. Thank you for clarifying. Uh, the uh, free program co-sponsored by Adult Jewish Growth, Renaissance and Brotherhood is going to be on Sunday, April 7th. Guest speaker Steve Litwak is the president of SAR L Volunteers for Israel. Little synopsis. Um, he will speak on the October 7th, 2023 Hamas attack and its aftermath through his first-hand knowledge volunteering in Israel. He will also speak in this organization, and he's been, which has been sending volunteers to Israel for many years and has continued to do so. Again, that event is this su uh, Sunday, April 7th at 1 o'clock. Light refreshments will be served. And this information will be repeated in the next highlights. We have an opportunity to RSVP. The next Rock Shabbat, Nevish Mountain, Shabbat evening service, Friday, April 12th, 2024, at 7.30 p.m. here in the synagogue. Okay, thank you. <laughs> Shabbat Shalom, thank you. Uh, only going to go to two-bar in advance. Um, tomorrow morning, Torah study, 9.15, in person or online, and then Learner Shabbat at 10.30, online only. Next Shabbat is taste of Shabbat because even though it's not a Jewish holiday weekend, it is a holiday weekend and it is our custom that we never ask our non-Jewish staff members to work on their holiday weekend. So it will be virtual only uh, next Friday night at six o'clock taste of Shabbat. Um, David, we're going to close our service tonight. Get ready for Purim. You can find in your prayer book on page 369, 369, Chab Purim. Uh, the holiday of Purim is a great festival for the Jews with masks, groggers, songs, and dancing. Let's make lots of noise with groggers. Chag Purim, Chag Purim, Agadol Eyenubim, Masechot Rashanim, Trim Lechorodim, Abana Nishra, Rash, 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 Abana Nishra, Rash, 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 Abana Nishra, Rash, 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 Narayadim. Chag Purim, Chag Purim, if you need the words to the Shabbat Kiddush that we found in your seat door on page 5, Ladies and gentlemen, once again, I invite you to rise either in body and or spirit. It is with the fruit of the vine that we sanctify the Sabbath day. Our prayer for each and every one of us that this day will always be a day of many blessings. As together we sing, Baruch Atarnai, Eloheinu Melech HaOlam, Morei Buriakatim. Baruch Atarnai, Eloheinu Melech HaOlam, Asher kedushanu b'mitzvotav v'ransav anu v'shavat kosho li'ahav avrutzom kintilanu zikaron lemaaseh bereishi 
He who yom tequila, let me cry in Kodesh, Zechel etiad mitraim. Ivanu v'acharta, yotanu kiyasha, mikomim, meshabar kochecha, and for those who are present, please join us for owning. Uh, thanks to our Chala Maven. <laughs> Robin made a special kala for Purim. It's a very colorful, long, and very sweet smelling kala. And then we have the regular. Baruch Adonai Elohim Melech Olam Amotzi Lechem Im Aret Shabbat Shalom everyone. We will bring this out to the...